there's really kind of three reasons. This is our neighborhood. Um, my company owns and operates the Wi-Fi network on the Staten Island Ferry. We have um, networks in southern uh, Manhattan, and we're also putting more networks in St. George, so the Empire outlets that's going in. So this is our back door. Um, we have, uh, you know, this is our neighborhood. So that's number one. Number two, we think that this is an, a very unique opportunity because it's a greenfield deployment. We can deploy amazing technologies without having to worry about legacy systems and have to worry about RF interference. It's very unique, right, that you have something that's uh, this close to very populous centers, but yet has nothing to um, interfere with legacy or RF. Uh, the third reason, and it's a challenge for our company to say, we have carte blanche here, we have this amazing opportunity, what can we do? How can we show the best of the best right now? So it's really the kind of the three reasons that we were attracted to the moonshot. Um, as for what, why, why our technology is unique is, um, I can't speak a, about our competitors, but we actually deployed four networks. We didn't deploy just a Wi-Fi network. We did a deploy a Wi-Fi network, and we think it's great. We use Ruckus gear, and um, I was getting 450 megabits per second on my iPhone. It's pretty good stuff. The second network that we had deployed is CBRS. Uh, we were uh, given a STA from the FCC, so a, a temporary license. We got very lucky. It was fastidiously um, adjudicated and granted, and uh, to the best of our knowledge, it's the first time that CBRS has been deployed in New York, certainly with the city agency. That's 3.5, that's gonna be good stuff in the future. Everyone's phone's gonna have it on it. So we deploy that network. Third one is IoT. We're using a LoRa technology, and that's just for you know any IoT device. So you walk around and that's, we're covering half the island with that. And then the fourth network is a small cell, so a licensed carrier. Um, I'm not sure if you've use, been using your phone out here, but it doesn't work all that great. So when you were by our installation, you get five bars and it was pushing 50 megabits per second on one of the carriers. So th those are the four networks. And why is that unique? Well, each component is, you know, we want to use best practices, but more than anything, it's a combination of all four. Um, people don't care if they're on 3.5 or on 2.4 or on Wi-Fi. They want their phones to work. And the way to do that is combining these networks, doing them at the same time, make sure that things are coordinated, both for aesthetics and also um, to make sure the technology works seamlessly. Attachments are a real issue. Uh, we operate Wi-Fi networks in uh, business improvement districts. Downtown Brooklyn's our network. And if you want to go on the polls, you have to have a poll franchise, right? Or you can gift it, but you can't make money or revenue. It makes it difficult to uh, justify you know, that kind of investment. So the attachment is a real issue. Um, you look for poll attachments, or if not, you got to deal with private property. It's a street fight. You got to go out there and you got to you know, cut these deals. It's very, very difficult. Anyone tells you otherwise isn't being honest or isn't uh, that bright. Um, one way to do this is you go to rooftops and use wireless technology to move a lot of data around. Um, I think all three companies here uh, showed that you can bring a lot of data on there very easily. Um, for my money, this is the most wired place in the world right now uh, with these three networks operating, our four networks on top of the other two Wi-Fi networks. So per capita or per square footage, this is literally the most connected place in the world for this week. And it only we were allowed a week and a half or so to, to deploy it. The rest of the city is not gonna operate like that, but using wireless backhaul um, is a way to really cut down the time and, and get it out there. But technologies like CBRS are really gonna change things. Um, you need perhaps 20% as many as, as Wi-Fi. So since the attachment points very well might be the gating factor, deploying 20 or 25% as many as the Wi-Fi APs goes a long way. Cuts down on how many you have to put out there. Um, but it's gonna be a difficult task when you especially get in these urban areas. And that's why you have uh, you know, gaps and um, you know, these urban canyons are very difficult to conquer. And then some of the outer boroughs, you know, the financial um, economics haven't been, you know, played out the way that it, everyone would like it to see as in Manhattan. So it's a, it's a very difficult job. You know, we're talking about Wi-Fi and, and uh, we, we lease SSIDs to people and our clients are concerned that it's going to be so polluted that in three to four years it's not going to be of the quality of service that is uh, going to be interesting to them. Hopefully it's longer than that. But there's a finite amount of capacity that these frequencies have and it's unlicensed. 3.5 um, is it's still being worked through, but the regime is going to um, involve light licensing and uh, some coordination. That's going to be in everyone's phone within 36 months, okay? And they're going to sell these frequencies hopefully next summer or there around. So 
the chipsets are going to start supporting different technologies that are really going to aid this. Uh, the Wi-Fi, once again, is very polluted. Um, we're deploying in a very dense business improvement district, and it's tough. Um, the quality of service isn't there. So technology is really the way out of this. Uh, you can densify to some point, but you're causing interference on yourself at some point, too. So the, the way forward is, is, is definitely different spectrum, different technologies, um, be that CBRS, be that millimeter, be that 5G. 5G, there's plenty of spectrum available. Um, and as they deploy that, hopefully for a while, it'll be a clean, clean experience and that'll, that'll be something that either, if not a permanent solution, might be a five year, 10 year stopgap. And we come out here and in 10 days we deploy $50,000 worth of kit, but all anyone wants to talk about is this $50 wrap. Um, <laughs> we're very sensitive to the ecological nature and the historic nature of uh, the island. We took a photo of the brick, we send it, uh, the file to a guy, and he prints it, sends it to us, and you wrap it. Um, it's, it's simply just a representation that we're here to, to make sure that we conform to the aesthetics. You know, we care about the ecology of the island. It's very important. Uh, we have uh, a network up in the Greenway of Boston. And, you know, when you're operating a park like that, a park like this, you don't want ugly equipment there. Everyone wants this great technology experience, but at the same time, you don't want it to be a blight. So um, this is just simply saying we understand that portion of it, and there are ways that we can uh, address that.